So we're given the coordinate negative 4, 8. So the first thing we want to do is plot it. Actually, the first thing we want to do is put away our phones. And the next thing we want to do is plot it. Okay. So we know that it approximately looks like this. And we know that we can draw a triangle with the x-axis and take our triangle off over here. You know that as well. Here's my theta. Here's my 90. I know this is 8 because that's that height. And I know this is negative 4. And I know that if I want to find the angle of standard position, I can just do tan whenever it's a point. Correct? But to get the reference angle, I always do tan theta of what, Xander? Why would I pick on you? <laughs> I'm going to just... Yes! And why would it be positive, though, is what I asked. Uh, why not? <laughs> why not? Uh, that's <laughs> yes, because your reference angle is actually positive. Because if you do tan neg one of positive, it will always land you in quadrant one, and the reference angle in and the angle in quadrant one are always the same. Correct? So that's why we always do positive. So we're going to go tan theta. Let's get my reference angle. Tan theta equals opposite over adjacent or y over x. Tan your x box. So we're going to get 8 over 4. Then we do theta equals tan neg 1 of 2. And what do we get for theta? What did you get? 63? 63? Yeah. 63? When it's drawn, does this kind of look like a reference angle of 63? Yeah, this could be 63 from here to here. Well, I want the standard position angle, so I want from here to here. How do I get it? 180 minus 63, exactly. So my standard position... Quiet, please. Standard position angle is going to be theta equals 180 minus 63 degrees. Make sure you have degree symbols. Remember, if you don't have degree symbols, you have radian measure, and you don't even know what that is. That's a problem. Um, 180 minus 63 is 100 and 17. Then what did I ask you to do? Give me the three primary trig ratios, which is sine, cos, and tan. Next year, we're going to have secant, cosecant, and cotan. Okay. So, not too fancy. So, the first thing we're going to have to do is solve for the hypotenuse, which we call what now? R. So, we're going to do R squared equals X squared plus Y squared. R squared equals 8 squared plus negative 4 squared. R squared equals... 64 plus 16, which is 80. Now, I told you guys, and this is why we're going to disperse radicals in here as well, because they fit in this unit. If I have plus or minus root 80, what's it going to be? Positive because you can't have a negative radius. Can I break down 80 into anything? What? Yes. Yeah. You could do 4 and 20. 16 and 5. 16 and 5 is what you could break it down into. You could do 4 and 20, but then you have to break 20 down to 4 and 5. You have to do it twice, right? The largest one you can break it down into is 16 and 5. The 16 comes out and it's a 4. So R equals 4 root 5. So I'm going to write that. So if I do sine theta, sign your resume, sign your resume. So what are we going to have? <laughs> A job. It made people laugh. Your jokes don't make people laugh. 
true. Okay. <laughs> so y over r. We're going to get 8 over 4 root 5. And then what do I have to do in order to rationalize it? Multiply by the root 5. So we get root 5 and root 5. Guys, you're talking too much today. So we're going to get 8 root 5 over 4. And then what's root 5 times root 5? 5. 5. So what's 4 times 5? 20. 20. And then what can I reduce these down by? 4. So it's going to be a 2. And this is going to be a 5. So my answer is 2 root 5 over 5. If you can't get 2 root 5 over 5, you will not get the correct answer. You will not get marked. So you have to get to that point. You have to be able to get to that point. Then cos is cook extra rice. So cos theta extra rice. So we're going to get negative 4 over 4 root 5. Still, once again, I have a square root in my denominator, a radical. How do I get rid of the radical? Because I need to rationalize my denominator. I'm going to multiply by just, just root 5. I don't need to multiply by the 4, right? Just the root 5 because it's a monomial. Because I just need the root 5 to go away. So I multiply by root 5, root 5. And I'm going to get negative 4 root 5 over 20. And it's 20 because it's 4 times root 5 times root 5. And root 5 times root 5 is just... 5. So 4 times 5 is 20. And what can I take out of each? A 4. So I'm going to get negative 1 and 5. So I get negative root 5 over 5. And then tan. This time we don't just take the, net, the positive. We only take the positive when it's a reference angle, correct? Tan is going to be opposite over adjacent or tan your x box, 8 over 4. Yep, thank you. So it's going to equal negative 2. Those are your three trig ratios, and then your angle and standard position. If you're like, I wonder if I'm going to have to know how to do that. Yes, you are. All of it. You have to do all of it. Yeah. Yeah. So now we have negative 225. What's the catch of negative 225? You have to go clockwise, right? It's negative. So you actually draw 225, but you're going to go clockwise. So the very first thing you're going to want to do is actually label your axes, but in clockwise fashion. So this is going to be 0, then this is going to be negative 90, and this is negative 180, negative 270, negative 360. And then we need to do 225. 225 falls between negative 180 and negative 270, correct? How much more than negative 180 is it? 45. So it's actually right in the middle. So I can go like this. My initial arm, I still have my rotation, and my initial arm is still here. The only catch now is my arrow goes clockwise, and I write negative 225. Now my reference angle is always positive. It's a positive angle between 0 and 90. It's a cute angle. Positive angle between 0 and 90. Okay? In this case, and it's always between the x-axis and the terminal arm, correct? Not the y. Yes. So what is my reference angle here? I go to my terminal arm, and I see how far it is to get me to here. How far is it? 45, right? Because this is 225 to 180. How do I get from 180 to 225? 45. So my reference angle... equals 45 degrees... On a test, you would not short form, you would write reference angle. And you would write it spelled correctly because the word is above. Yeah, it's crazy. Okay, for three, I gave you a quadratic question. And why am I still giving you these? Because after um, trig and radicals, you're going to have a cumulative on your first five chapters. That is kind of like, you have two cumulatives instead of three. So, here we have, well, your first cumulative is basically a midterm, and then you have another one after that, and then you have a final. Okay, so here we have, given y equals negative 2x squared minus 4x plus 3. Um, now, the reason why I'm saying this to you, nice to you, the reason why I'm saying this to you is that um, 
The reason why we're doing cumulatives is you guys are usually, from what I've seen this year with other grade 11, are really good at retaining short term and then trying to retain all of it long term. You kind of don't have that skill. <laughs> you get to take kind of cost that. Because um, either the finals are worth little or nothing, and therefore your studying skills aren't higher. So, um, I'm making you have a cumulative halfway through and then a cumulative very close to the end. So you basically have a final anyways, even if your final doesn't count. We'll see what happens. Um, you're, I'm forcing you to have stuff count. Because next year, you're going to have a diploma worth 30. And we don't want that to be the time when you find out you're not good at grand final. Okay? Uh, we want that to be like the time when you're like, man, I'm so good at finals. I rock finals. Finals are my thing. They're my jam. Okay. So here, it says convert vertex to vertex form and determine the axis of symmetry. So we have to complete the square. So we go negative 2, square bracket, round bracket, x squared, plus 2x, plus, how do I get the blank? I take this b value here with its sign, so I go plus 2 divided by 2 squared, and I don't skip any steps, 1 squared, and I get 1. So I get plus 1, minus 1, plus 3. And then I get y equals negative 2. And then this x plus 2, x squared plus 2, x plus 1 factors 2. x plus 1, x plus 1. We agree? There's two of them. So because we can look back here. Multiply is going to be 1, add to be 2. x plus 1 and x plus 1. Do I have to write them out side by side? Or can I just write squared? And then negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2 plus 3. And then y equals negative 2 x plus 1 squared plus 5. Now please remember that when you turn, when you convert from um, just normal standard form, I'm going to complete form, normal standard form to completed the square form, you can type 1 into y1, 1 into y2, and they should be the same graph, correct? You should walk away knowing what it is. Axis of symmetry is the line that cuts the graph in half vertically, and it's an x equals line, so it's at x equals what? What's it at? Negative 1. It's the x of the vertex. And what's my vertex at? Negative 1 and positive 5. Then here I want the zeros. So what multiplies give me negative 6 and adds to give me negative 4? Nothing. So I can't factor it. I can't solve it by factoring. So what am I going to have to solve it by? Quadratic formula. Make sure you guys are not on your phones. Because I'm not doing this for myself. I'm really good at these. Rock is actually my fave. Yeah. So what you could do is you can move everything to the other side to make your 2x squared positive if that's what you want. Or you can leave it on this side. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to leave it here because I'm sure you guys did. So this is going to be my A. This is going to be my B. This is going to be my C. So I get x equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2a. So I get x equals negative and negative 4. So I get plus 4. Plus or minus. And then I'm going to get negative 4 squared. Minus 4 times negative 2 times 3. All over 2 times negative 2. So I get x equals 4. Plus or minus. And what do you get when you put that in? It's going to be 16 plus 24, 40, over negative 4. And then what do I have to make sure I do? Reduce the 40, correct? Well, where's that from? Grade 10. We're also going to do a whole bunch of that today. So root 40 breaks down into what and what? 4 and 10. The 4 comes out and becomes a? 2 and 2 root 10. So I'm going to get x equals 4 plus or minus 2 root 10 over negative 4. And then what did I tell you about reducing this? The number has to come out of the what? The triangle. Exactly. The numbers have to come out of the triangle, those three numbers. If it can't come out of the whole triangle, can I take it out? No. All right. So I can take out a 2, 2 out of 4 I get a 2, 2 out of 1 I get a 1, 2 out of negative 4 I get negative 2, 
So my answer for exact values is 2 plus or minus root 10 over negative 2. Done. And I can check these as well by turning those to decimals, going to my calculator, getting the decimals, and they should match. Correct? Okay. Can I get you to open up your notes? Yep. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Can I get you to open up your notes to the radical that just dropped off? So we are, like I said, dispersing some radicals in some trig. This way it'll give you longer time with the trig as well, so you'll have more time to practice. Like tomorrow's daily quiz will have the same trig with a little bit of radical on it, right? Well, another quadratic question. So we'll get to keep practicing our trig till we're really good at it. So today we're doing radicals, tomorrow we're going to do another trig lesson. So today's lesson, we've basically already done it. Um, at the beginning of this year, and you did it all in grade 10. We're going to go over it because it has some variables in it, which makes it a little harder for people. So here, we have a mixed radical. Mixed radical means some of the numbers outside, some of the numbers under the radicand. Okay? You were taught this last year. This is your coefficient, the number in front. This is your index, the number on the root. If there isn't a number there, what is it? It's a 2. It's a square root, right? We don't have to write the 2. It's the radicand, the number underneath the radical, and then the radical sign. Like radicals, we have to have the same base, radicand, and index. So a radical in its simplest form is a radical term where the radicand does not contain a fraction, the radicand does not contain a factor that can be removed, and the denominator does not contain a radical. Which we've already talked about our denominator can't have a radical, rationalizing the denominator. We have to do that in trig, right? So there are restrictions on variables in the radicand. What do you know about when it has an even index? So say I have square root x. What do I know about what's underneath the square root? What does it have to be? Positive or zero? It can't be negative, correct? So if you just had a square root of like seven, you could say, oh, square root seven. But we're going to deal with ones where they actually have variables underneath. So this one here, square root x, if it's just an x, then I have to state behind x has to be greater than or equal to zero. x won't be allowed to be negative, right? So if you have a variable under your radicand and you have an even index, you have to state what your restricted domain is. If you have a cubic radicand or index, you don't have to. Why? Cubic or a 5 or a 7 or a 9, an odd index. Because you can take negatives of an odd index and you can take positives. Now I'll show you why. When you're using a cube root function, Really what you're doing, and maybe you don't even know you're doing this, if you want to take the number out when it was a square, you had to have a perfect square, correct? Because it was a 2 for 1. So let's go back to the square root. We just did this. We did 40. We just did square root of 40, correct? And we did 4 and 10, did we not? But what we could have shown is we could have shown 2 times 2 times 10, correct? And then it's a 2 for 1 special. Because it's a, there's a 2 on this index, these 2s can come out and be 1, 2 because it's 2 for 1, right? That's why they have to be a perfect square. So if it's a cubic, how many do I have to have in order to take it out? 3. So if I have negative 2 and a negative 2 and a negative 2, when I take that out, what's it going to actually just equal? Negative 2, because it's 3 negative 2s. I would circle them all and I would take it out. What's still left underneath? Nothing, so this would all go away, right? So this is just, what I just did was I did the cube root of negative 8, right? Cube root of negative 8 is negative 2 plus negative 2 plus negative 2, which is actually negative 2. So you can take cube roots, fifth roots, seventh roots, so odd indexes of positive and negative numbers. It's just evens that have to be positive, okay? So you guys rock at these ones. Go. Try it out. We've done these. Oh. Just so you know, this is from grade 10. It's still an outcome in grade 11. But for this whole unit on radicals, if you can't reduce radicals, you aren't going to be able to do any of the questions. Because the first thing you have to do is, like when you add and subtract, you have to reduce every radical so that you can collect like radicals. Okay? Well, if you can't reduce a radical, you can't collect like radicals. You can't do adding and subtracting. Multiplying and dividing, you'll multiply and you'll divide. But if you can't reduce the radical, you can't finish the answer, right? 
in trig, if you can't reduce a radical, you're not going to be able to finish the answer when you do Pythagorean theorem. So reducing radicals is so important. So if someone's like, eh, I could probably get away with it, you, it's, you absolutely cannot. There's, there's like, you just cannot do the questions if you can't reduce. So once again, like factoring, there's a point where you have to come to that admittance stage, you know? Cast denial to admittance, and then you go to Mrs. Lev, and you're like, Mrs. Lev, I can't reduce these, help me. And I'm like, okay, let's do this. Okay? All right, so let's make sure our phones are away. Root 12, it reduces to what perfect square? 4 and 3. The 4 comes out and it's a 2. So we're left with 2 root 3. 32, what biggest perfect square does it break into? Nick. 32. Uh, 16 and 2. 16 comes out and it's a 4 and we get 4 root 2. Tegan, 75, what does it break down into? 25 and 3. 25 comes out and it's a 5. So we get 5 square root 3. 90, Isabel. What does 90 break down into? Rhymes with 9. <laughs> It is nine. Nine and what? Yeah. You guys would just get off her back. She could answer this question. She looked Chill. at me. Relax. For the answer. No, she looked at you like, stop it. That's what she looked at me like. This is, what, this is how I felt, and I'm totally right all the time. So, root nine becomes a what? Three. So we get three root ten. Okay, cube root of 16, my friends. Ty, what does 16 break down into? What well, cube root? Eight. Eight and two, right? Yeah. So we get eight times two. When the eight comes out, what does it actually come out as? A two, because the cube root of eight is two. So we get two cube root of two. Which? F. 125 times 2. 5 root 2, yeah. Because 125 comes out, cube root of 125 is 5. So I'm going to get 5 cube root of 2. Okay, one of the curriculum outcomes in grade 10, and also still in grade 11, is to convert each mixed radical to an uh, equivalent entire radical. Entire radical means everything's under the radical. Okay? So what did we do to get the 2 out? In this case, we square rooted it, correct? So take it back in, what are we going to do? Square it. Now the easiest way to do these questions to get your entire radicals is write your actual index number on the root. Do you see me writing it there? Then do that and bring it inside. Because if I put the index there, it actually looks like 2 squared, doesn't it? So I'm just going to get 5 times, bring this inside, 2 squared. You don't have to show this step, but I'm showing it to prove point. So it's going to be 5 times 4, which is root 20. Now with the 13, I put the little squared here. When I bring that inside, what am I going to get? 2 times 13 squared, right? 13 squared is 169 times 2 is 338. Okay, you do C, D, and E. We're going to do it quickly. These ones should be fast. So this one we're going to get 5 squared. So we're going to get the square root of 2 times 25, which is root 50. This one we're going to get 4 to the 3, because it's cubed. So we have to write the cube root. You see how I have equal signs running down on each one of these? You should as well. You should also not have your phone up. That is not helpful thing. Okay, so you should have equal signs running down the left-hand side the whole way, correct? Because each of them is equivalent to the next one. If I typed each one of these in, I would get the exact same decimal. So that's how you know if you're right. You could type in um, 5 root 2 and you could type in root 50. They will give you the same answer. Then you know you didn't make a mistake. You can check these. You said last year, you can check them this year. Same thing. So we're going to get cube root of 2 and then 4 cubed is... 
64, so we actually get the cube root of 128. Then 2 cubed, make sure you write the cube root. Don't forget that index or it is a square root, correct? 4, and then 2 cubed is 8, so I get the cube root of 32. Now we're flipping over. What's the difference to the next one? There are what? Variables. It's not hard, trust me. You're just going to do two for one special. So here we have task number one. Express each radical as implied mixed radical. Now this is the catch, guys. So the 54, we're going to do the exact same as we did before, correct? Nothing changing there. 54, what can I break it down into? What biggest perfect square? Uh, 9 and 6. 9 and 6. So this is going to equal, because these are equivalent, it's going to equal 9 times 6. Now, what is my special for this one? How many do I need to take out to get 1? This one's a 2 for 1 special, correct? Because the index is 2. We agree? If the index was 3, I would need 3 to take out 1. Correct? So the x is just follow that as a special. So x squared, if you really want to, you can just write it as x times x. Correct? So how many x's am I going to get out of this? 2. 2, and then I'm going to get how many out? 1. It's a 2 for 1, right? 2 x's gets me 1 outside of the radical, right? Because the square root of x and x is 1x. Right? The square root of 9, 9 is 3 times 3, so I'm taking two 3's and I'm getting one 3 out. That's why it works when it's a perfect square. 2 for 1, right? So the square root of 9 is 3. The square root of 2 x's is just a x, and what's left underneath? A 6. Do you see that? Good. Try the other ones. So 54... We break down into 9 and 6. That hasn't changed. And then x4, we could go x, 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 x. You could go like this. Or you could write it as x squared times x squared, correct? Because for every x squared, I get 1x. For every x squared, I get 1x. So I can write it like this. The 9 comes out as a 3. These x's come out as an x. These x's come out as an x. Right? So I would get 3x squared root 6. Okay? They fully came out because there was an even number of x's and there's an even index, right? So all the x's can come out. What happens when it's not like that? So 350 I can break down into what? What does it break down into? Um, 25 times 14 times x times x times x. So the 25 comes out and it's a 5. That's good. These two x's come out and they become a x. And then that x just stays. It can't come out. It's 1x. I need 2 for 1. 2 for 1. So what am I going to get? I'm going to get 5x root 14x. And then this one, 350 breaks down into 25 and 14 still. That didn't change. And then I have an x and an x and an x and a y and a y and a y and a y and a y. I'm going to show this so that it's not as awful. This is the way you can do it though. 25 comes out as a 5. Two x's come out as 1x. These two y's come out as two y's, so in that case it would be a y squared. And then I'm left with 14xy. The other way you can do it instead of listing them all out is you have to list them in if it's an index in squares. Right? So you could go 25 times 14 times x squared times x times y4 times y. You could write it like that. x squared is going to come out as 1x. y4 is going to come out as y squared. Right? 2y. So you can write it like that. And then you'd still get 5xy squared square root 14xy.
These ones you're switching to entire radicals. Go. So this one, we're going to put the 2x underneath. And when you put it in, remember you square it. So you're going to get 5 times 2 squared, which is 4, times x squared. So you're going to get 20x squared. These you're going to drop underneath to the 2. So you're going to get 2 times 13 squared, which is 169, times x squared, which is x squared. And so I get 3, did you say it was 338, I believe? Yeah. I think Ted said that before. Okay, these ones we're going to raise to the 2 because there is no index. So when we drop them underneath, we're going to get 5 squared. Sorry, we need the 2 first. Then we're going to get 5 squared, which is 25. x squared. What's y squared squared? Y, 4. Yeah, when you have one base to exponent to multiply. You learned that last year in grade 10. So you're going to get root 50, x squared, y, 4. Then this is squared. So we're going to get an x underneath. And then the 9 squared is 81. x squared squared x to the 4. I don't know what you're doing. Please stop. y squared. And so we put these together. We're going to get 81. What happens when we have two bases, two exponents? So when we have one base, two exponents, we multiply. When we have x to the 1 and x to the 4, how many x's do we have? 5. That's why you add the exponents. That's why you're taught that in grade 10 to add. Because you have x to the 1 and then you have 4 more x's, which makes you 5 x's. So x1 times x4 is x5 y squared. And then these ones you would get um, the cube root of 2 times 4 cubed, which is 64 times x cubed. You can't forget the cube root, the 3, or else it's not a cube root. So you get 128 x cubed. Then this one you're going to drop them underneath. So you're going to get the cube root of 4 times 2 cubed times x to the 6. What does on x? So you get the cube root of 8 times 4, which is 32x to the 6. The homework is not a lot, but there is some. Oh, oh. 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 Okay, so page. <clears throat> Two seventy-eight numbers one to four. Uh, 